Yeah, well, hey, what's up, what's up? It's party time. Billy Turbos, wait a minute, who let this guy in? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to take you behind the scenes on all the testing that we did to eventually choose the two turbos that we currently sell at richardholderperformance.com. We have our 800 horsepower turbo, AKA GTX 3584RS, and our 1200 horsepower turbo, our G42. But how did we choose those two turbos and what did we compare them to? Well. Let's take a look. Okay, guys, before we get going, right off the bat for you guys who are looking, oh, Richard's going to max out these turbos and we're going to find out which one's better. No, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> because we were looking for turbos for very, very specific reasons to sell on richardholderperformance.com. One, I wanted a very, very responsive turbo to replace the GT45 turbo that I had been offering or I had been recommending, let's say, for years. I mean, it was inexpensive, it had boost, so it had two good things that people wanted out of a turbo. But let's face it, it's an old design. And so what we were looking for was a turbo that was ideally both much more responsive, not hard to do, also would make more power, we're getting a little bit harder now, and be affordable. I mean, we could pick a thousand or two thousand horsepower turbo and do all of that, but we wanted something also that was affordable. So our GTX 3584RS, we compared that to the GT45, but also to an S369 and a 6670. So we had a lot of good comparisons. For the larger turbo, we picked a G42 ultimately, but not af but only after testing it with a 7675 and a 7875. Now the one turbo I wanted also to compare this to, but we didn't have enough time, was an S475, but your typical S475 T6 turbo is not really going to compare to these other T4 turbos. It's not gonna be nearly as responsive and it also ultimately will not make as much power as any of these. So I'm going to test that in the future and we're gonna compare it directly to the G42, but we kind of know what's gonna happen there. But these other turbos are very good. But again, here's what we were looking for. The reason that we didn't max these out, because I don't care about making 1200 horsepower. We've already made like 950 at 15 pounds on the G42 at only 15 pounds, we know it's going to continue to go up. We know it will make the power. What we wanted was four digit power level turbo, like these others are. We also wanted good response, and we also wanted it to be affordable. And we only got that information after testing all of this stuff. And we've got a bunch of data for you. We've got the compressor size, the turbine size, the AR. We've got load in boost. We've got the KPA there. We've got the KPA at 100% load in. We've got boost at different RPMs. We've got the peak boost. We've got back pressure. We've got a lot of good data for you. So stick around for all of these turbos. But first, Let's take a look at our test motor, then let's hear it run, then let's get to the data. Okay guys, very quickly I want to go over our test motor. It was our 5.3 liter, the L33 aluminum motor that we got from the wrecking yard. This thing's got near 700 poles on it now. We had the stock 799 heads on it. We had, they had been equipped with BTR springs. It had our low buck truck camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. It had a Trailblazer SS intake manifold, a 92 millimeter throttle body. We had these very cool BTR cast valve covers that allowed us to pull the valve covers off without removing the coils. We really kind of like that. We had ran stock LS3 coils on it like we do on all these turbo things. We ran it with Westex dyno headers. We used a Holly HP management system. We ran this thing on E85. We started it with E85 because we knew we were going to run a bunch of turbo stuff on it. But our naturally aspirated motor uh, with headers on it and, and our low buck truck camshaft, 439.5 horsepower and 423 foot pounds. And here's what happened when we just started adding boost. And so, you know, this happened with all of the turbos. This, this is basically what they would do. So we, I just wanted to show you, we run, uh, that's about nine pounds or so. And then on this particular combination, we ran our GTX 3584RS turbo, ran it up to 800 horsepower. That was about 15 pounds of boost on that thing. And it did very well. Like I said, you, you see, that's why we call it the 800 horsepower turbo. It probably would keep going if we ran more boost with it, but you can see it, it did very well. And all of these turbos would do exactly like this. Let's take a look at the G42 turbo. 
and then we'll take a look at all of the data and all the dyno results on all the turbos. Let's take a look at the turbo setup that we use to run all the different turbos on our 5.3 liter. Here's what you can expect from turbo size like the G42. Okay guys, here we have all of the data and dyno results from all of our testing. You can see uh, I've broken this down into the small turbos and the big turbos. <laughs> it's weird that a thousand horsepower turbo would be a small turbo, but we have for this group, we have the GT45, we have the S369, we have the 6670 and the 3584 RS turbos. And what I've done is we had, you can see right here, I'll go ahead and draw this. We have an L and an H here. What that means is we ran these at two different boost levels. Now we tried to, everything that we could to make sure that they were the same on all of them, but but actually they're not exactly the same boost for the low and high versions of each one of the turbos. So if there's a difference in power output, it's probably just attributed to a change in boost. We didn't run a boost controller. We tried to do this manually because that's what we had. But again, I'm not interested in the total power output. We were more interested in the other aspects and the other data logging that we got here. So what I have here is I have the blade count so you can see on the gt45 it's got six blades on the compressor side we have the rated power output it was roughly 800 for a gt45 we have the compressor size both the uh, inducer and exducer we have the turbine size both the inducer and exducer we have the ar for each one of them and these this 32 percent you see right here what that is, is when we roll into the dyno, the way the dyno works is we set the beginning RPM and the ending RPM for the dyno run, and we roll into the throttle, the dyno holds onto the motor, keeps it at that RPM until you get to wide open throttle. Well, we're data logging this the whole time as we're rolling in, and I chose a point that at 32% TPS, I wanted to see what the boost was from the turbo as we were rolling in. We can't really get a really good boost response on an engine dyno. It's not the ideal combination. Obviously, a chassis dyno or on the street would be even better, depending on which gear you're in. But this gives us an idea on boost response. Because once we're at a once we're at wide open throttle on a stationary load on the dyno, almost all of these are definitely producing boost. But this 32% as we're rolling in gives you a good indication on which one would have the best boost response. So this is that. 100% is once we are at wide open throttle, still loaded with the dyno, what is the, what is, the, and these are all registered in KPA. So 136 is 136 KPA. And for the people that don't understand, 100 KPA is basically NA wide open throttle. Anything above 100 KPA is boost. So in this case, we had 36 KPA were the boost. And for the people that don't understand that, 50 KPA would be 7.35 pounds. In this case, 200 kPa or a hundred above NA would be 14.7 pounds. And you can just multiply 0.36 in this case. We have 136. 0.36 times 14.7 would tell you how much boost that is. This BP right here is back pressure. So we're showing you what the back pressure is. And this is at 100% of, of load. What the boost pressure is at 4,500 RPM during the run what the peak boost pressure was during the run at any point, and then what the boost pressure was at 6,000 RPM once we ran this. And so we did this again at two different boost levels for each one of the turbos, and we did it with all the turbos. And really the thing that we were most interested in was this 32% number right here because we wanted to see what the boost response was we knew that all these turbos would make the power that we wanted but we kind of want to get an idea 
of what the boost response was for each one of these turbos and you can go through and compare all these one of the interesting things is this one down here <laughs> this was the gtx 3584 rs turbo run on one side of the motor just the exhaust from one side i have a video up on that it's called an asymmetrical turbo but you can kind of get an idea what happens there we did this for the smaller turbos we did this also for the bigger turbos. We had a 7675, a 7875, and the G42. We have all the information there. You guys can kind of go over this. We'll leave this up here for a little bit. But we also have the relative power outputs at these different KPAs for each one of them. You can kind of compare those. But again, these turbos will all do way more than this because we just didn't, didn't run a lot of boost on any of this testing. So we have the power outputs for the smaller turbos. We have the relative power outputs for the bigger turbos. But now one of the things I want to talk about is cost. So if we look at the least expensive turbo here on these small turbos is obviously the GT45. You can get those for between $200 and $300, let's say. And so that's why they're such a good deal and they're so popular. But if we look at the S369 turbo, Viren over at VS Racing, who I've got nothing but great things to say about. They do good stuff over there. He has a version of that for like $509. But if you get a real Borg Warner Turbo that's an S369, it's going to be a thousand plus dollars. The 6670, if you get a precision version of that, that's going to be a $25 to $3,500 turbo. I wasn't able to find any low dollar versions of that. I think that they're probably out there, but that's a fairly expensive turbo. The 3584 that we tested that we sell at richardolderperformance.com is only $369. So it's a pretty affordable turbo. And you could see, you could check out all the data here. It's very, very responsive and again, capable of $800. If we take a look at the pricing on the bigger turbos, the 7675, again, you can get a cast version of that turbo um, for $899, but we tested the billet version, and the billet version is going to be fairly expensive, $2,700 or so. The 7875, again, VS Racing, I got nothing but good things to say. Those guys do good stuff over there. That turbo was only $749, so a really good deal, and obviously it can make lots of power. The G42 that we ended up choosing, we're selling it for $579, so it does all of these things and obviously is a really good deal, which is kind of what we were looking for. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.